Monday morning folks, we're in the unit already. It's an absolutely beautiful day outside. I wish I was working outside today. But alas, I still have two tanks to, uh, to fully weld up. So I'm gonna get these bad boys on the bench and we'll see if we can get these done before the argon runs out on that tank. Then we'll get in touch with Parkers who are the guys who can deliver the argon for me. And then after that, I will measure up some radius or the diameter, the circumference of some of these tanks and see if we can't get out the plasma cutter and make some circles. I've only got until three o'clock of course, so I'm just gonna plow on today. Well, in order to improve my welding skills, I've been playing around with the settings on the welder and I've incorporated some pulse into, uh, into the weld bead. So I've tried a few different things on here and you can really see with the difference in coloration uh, what seems to have worked and what seems to not have worked. So this weld here, for instance, and I think this one there and one of these was just how I was welding yesterday, about 40 amps, uh, full pedal, and then just chasing the puddle down the seam. And then I thought, right, I'll play with these pulse settings. So these blue ones here, I had them set at 50, 51 amps. Well, there we go then. It was 51 amps, uh, 20 pulses per second with a background ampage of 30% and they don't look too bad, there's a bit of blue in. And then I went across here and I changed it to one pulse per second, kept all the other settings the same and that is the bead that resulted from it and also this one. So apart from a little bit of where it's not knitted there, that's a lot tighter, that's a lot neater, there's a lot less discoloration on the back. So I think the way to go is with the pulse Folks, I think I've gone and nailed it. So I swapped the chill bar to the back side of this just to protect to protect the internal weld, which it has done. Doesn't seem to have melted through. And I went in and I reflowed. I reflowed all of this seam. Let's see if we can get some good light on this. I'm really, really pleased with this. Does that look good? Full penetration, inside and out. Wow. Yeah, my papers this week, I think. So I'm literally down onto the last sort of 200 PSI of Argon. So I'm gonna bring another tank in. I'm gonna start to reflow the back of it, just like I have done, until this is empty. And then once that's a goner, I've already rang them up, they've got two in stock, I can go and exchange today. Things are going well, I'm really pleased. It's an amazing Monday. This was the worst one yesterday, or the day before. The one with the big blowout, and I managed to reflow it all, honestly man. I am so bloody impressed that I think I've got the bloody settings bang on. This one pulse per second is perfect. It just allows me to move forward just in time and make the world look like little coins stacked on the side. So what I'm gonna do now is get the grinder out. 
I'm going to remove this part and then I'm going to re-weld it before the argon goes. I've got a tiny bit left, maybe 100 psi. One hole filled and repaired, folks. Okay, so we've got the argon cylinder. That's how much pressure is left into her. Hardly 19 quads or other, should be at 3,000. So, oh, close. Let's get her taken up to Parker's and get a new cylinder. <laughs> So, a 20 litre bottle of Argon retails at 208 pounds. Yeah, that's right. 208 pounds and 19 pence. And then for the cylinder, I got a refund of 100 pounds plus that, so that's 120. Return, leaving 84.19 to pay. Good deal or not, you tell me. And that's one of the reasons why I got the MIG. So, for rough jobs and welding things such as angle iron, normal mild steel and what have you, I can run the MIG on CO2. We've got CO2 for about £15 a bottle in the pub. So it makes sense really, doesn't it, to use that. But he did bring me some Argon CO2 for, I think it was uh, 20 or 30 quid, which is of course a fraction of the price of that. And there's no cylinder deposit either with Dongas, who's the company that we use. They're top draw. Recommend them to anybody. New bottle in. Let's carry on welding, folks. Oh, what's that? Oh, I noticed. That. Look at that. Look at the distortion. Aha! That's happened since I've gone away then when it's cooled. I'll be able to hammer that out though. I'm not too worried. Well, that surprised me. Gemma's brought me some lunch. Oh yes, baby. Oh yeah. Right, the pulse setting seems to be working absolutely brilliantly on this. Yeah, I'm so pleased with it. This is the back side, this is the second weld. That's what it looks like from just welding the inside. This is a beautiful run here. Just all the way along there in one go. I did like, I took a risk and I must have done a foot in one go without stopping and it came out wonderfully and then to get the uh... oh, hi Jim then to get the the roundness back into her you know the, the radius back into her I've just put the lump hammer on the inside and belted it with the metal hammer on the outside and it worked a treat I do advise putting some earmuffs on though it's really loud take that peak come in you see the peak, you capture out points and then comes like a point of a triangle. So we want to take that out before I weld the back sides. And I also used this technique to improve the fit up after I'd tacked them and the tacks weren't perfectly level, you know. The two plates might have been slightly missing each other. I managed to just do that and get all the tacks lined up perfectly so the tag man welding in there it's turned out a bloody diamond. That's, uh, that's pretty good if you ask me. So just need to turn it over. And the same going to the other side. Check that out, Richards. Taking that peak out completely, isn't it? Mm. I'm going to reflow this one on this side just to make it look nice. I'm going to really clean it all up. 
but this was the worst out of the five and now it's not looking too bad oh boys and girls it is 2.45 I have to go home but before I leave may I just say no grinding necessary eh? NGN no grinding needed and the really bad one which I've just had to tart up well would you look onto her that was the first one I've gone back over it again now I've got some meters of weld under my belt god I'm pleased with it yes it looks fan dabby dozy like petal I'm very pleased with myself I must say I'm beaming so I just need to get some pickling paste onto her and they will clean up significantly but I'm thinking I'm not going to pickle them yet because I need to clamber inside at some point to weld the bases on. So I may as well pickle it all in one go, hadn't I? Save on the paste then. I was hoping to be able to cut some discs and uh, some comb patterns today out of the steel I've got over there. Don't think we're going to have time. I really have blitzed these tanks out. Inside, I've welded the outside of five tanks and the inside of three there's the steel that I was going to use for the pattern so I'm going to turn the lights off guys go and pick up the kiddiewinkles and then maybe just maybe we'll still have a bit more filming to do just maybe so we came home from school yeah. and I've used that £10 tool station uh, voucher yes, to get some uh, polishing discs and grinding discs for the work on the tank so let's have a buzz over the workshop and pick it up mate yeah your mum's gonna kill me because I think I might have got her laundry basket in shot <laughs> she'll not be happy come on then abs I'm ready she's having a poo <laughs> What you got? Pine cones. Oh, you got loads of them. I only have four. Make sure there's no bugs inside them. Sometimes earwigs live inside them. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,